Ljudi se okupljaju i udružuju iz raznih razloga. Sport, numizmatika, stripovi, rock and roll band, skupljanje leptira, religija, grupni seks. Možete li povjerovati da se neki ljudi udružuju da bi vladali svijetom? Takav je navodno slučaj sa veselom družbom Bilderberg. Ime su dobili po nizozemskom hotelu u kojem su se prvi put sastali 1954. godine. Članovi kraljevskih obitelji, političari, utjecani poslovni ljudi, članovi obavištanih zajednica skupili su se da bi se dogovorili oko dugoročnih strateških interesa između SAD-a i Zapadne Europe. Tako je počela tradicija održavanja godišnjih konferencija. Svake godine skupina se sastaje u nekom drugom gradu, a uporni novinar Daniel Estolin posljednjih 15 godina proveo razotkrivajući tajne sastanke skupine Bilderberg. Estolinova knjiga Istineta priča o družbi Bilderberg postala je međunarodna uspješnica. U Španjolskoj je doživjela 13 iznanja, a objavljena je u 53 zemlje. Estolinovim riječima, bez obzira gdje se skupina Bilderberg odluči sastati, uvijek ću saznati o čemu će razgovarati, možete se klariti u to. Pa, kladimo se. Mada nam to nije običaj ovdje, na rubu znanosti. Pozdrav svima. Daniel Estulin je istraživački novinar i autor knjige Istinita priča o družbi Bilderberg. Pa čujemo što je u Bilderberzima iznjedrio u 15. godina istraživanja. Dobar dan. Good evening, thank you. First of all, thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be in your program. Jeste li istraživački novinar ili ste i nešto više s obzirom na zaleđe koje nam može omogućiti da vidimo na koji način istražujete Bilderberge? Well, in fact, I'm not an investigative journalist. Uh, um, I, I, investigative journalists are journalists. They go to school, they study their art, and then they apply it. My background is uh, in military counterintelligence. Gdje ste radili i u koji službi i kada? I've... Uh, I've worked for uh, 12 years with the, uh, with the Russian counterintelligence mm -hmm. and uh, I left it uh, about five years ago um, to join this other organization called Meta mm -hmm. Groups. It's a group of uh, uh, people in and out of intelligence and counterintelligence mm -hmm. services who are actually working together across the world to stop the Bilderbergers and their cohorts mm -hmm. from uh, actually exercising their plans. Mm -hmm. Uprkos tome što su Bilderberzi našli svoj put i do novina i do knjiga, mnogi ljudi još uvijek se prvi put sreću s tim pojmom. Objasnite nam tko ili što je skupina Bilderberg, zašto se zove Bilderberg, od kada postoji pod tim imenom? Well, you know, in the, uh, <clears throat> in the world of international finance, there are those who steer the events and those who react to the events. And uh, while the latter, they're better known, they're greater in numbers, the true power rests with the form. These are the people you never see in the, in the media. And the very center of this uh, a giant global conspiracy sits a group called themselves the, the Bilderberger Society Organizations or Club. Um, what they are is an aristocracy of purpose uh, between North American and European elites on the best ways to uh, rule the planet. Da li su Bilderberzi tek jedna od grupa koje umreženi kontroliraju svijetom ili su možda oni glavna grupa? Well, actually they're not the main. They're a very important medium and they are a medium Uh, because through them a lot of organizations, especially financial uh, and industry interests, meet to uh, exercise their uh, ideology. And that ideology is not one world government or new world order. So many people, unfortunately, especially in conspiracy circles, talk about the ideology of what these people represent is rather one world company limited, where literally one day corporations shall give orders to governments. Koje biste još grupe spomenuli uz Bilderberge kao važne u toj agendi? Uh, you can mention, obviously, aside from the Bilderbergers, which are more exclusive because they're the smaller um, in numbers of different known societies. Another one is the Council on Foreign Relations, which is, uh, Relations, which is an American version of uh, the Bilderberger organization. Then you have the Trilateral Commission. But along with these three better known organizations, you have uh, uh, such groups as Nine Wise Men, you have the Cincinnati Club, uh, then you have the think tanks, the foundations, the you know, NGOs, mm -hmm. the universities, mm -hmm. and all of them are working together towards the same goal. Što se 1954. dogodilo i gdje? Što je započelo tradiciju sastanaka grupe Bilderberg? Gdje su se prvi put našli? 
Well, you see, um, the Bilderberg organization uh, uh, was founded by uh, this uh, group of people called Synergy International, who are really a uh, Martinist uh, occult secret society. Now, these Martinists, uh, their roots go back to the 1780s, and uh, uh, they were founded as the uh, uh, counterattack uh, to the achievements of the United States American Revolution. And uh, again, it's a medium of uh, bringing together interests of people who share, you know, their common ideology of the world. And that ideology has nothing to do with, you know, nation building. It is rather uh, destruction, wholesale destruction of every nation state republic on earth with all of its consequences. Koliko članova broji družba Bilderberg danas? Koliko ljudi se okuplja na tim godišnjim sastancima? Well, uh, since 1954, when they met for the first time in, in Oosterbeck in a hotel called uh, the Bilderberg Hotel, which at the time was owned by the uh, Dutch <coughs> royal family, um, the number hasn't really changed. It was 67 at the beginning, and then it grew because the number of nations who mm -hmm. uh, participated in Bilderberg conferences grew. And now uh, uh, 120 to 130 people mm -hmm. uh, participate annually. Out of these, one-third of the delegates are from the United States, and the rest are from Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, smaller nations, uh, um, such as uh, Denmark, Spain, uh, um, Italy, Portugal, they get to bring three delegates, one a politician, one a business leader, mm -hmm. and one a media representative. Larger nations, such as uh, uh, France and, uh, uh, and Germany and the UK, they get to bring about six to, uh, to eight different uh, uh, participants. Another thing about Bilderberg is that before, it used to be a NATO alliance, Europe, United States, and Canada. That is until the fall of the Berlin Wall, and now it all has also incorporated uh, members from uh, former Warsaw Alliance. Kakav je profil ljudi koji su članovi Bilderberga? Što su oni u svojim zemljama po zanimanju ili po položaju? Well, uh, um, again, uh, um, irrelevant of, of their position in their countries, what all of them share is an ideology, and that ideology is ideology of, it's an empire. What they're doing is creating an empire. That's what globalization is. That's what, you know, these uh, multi-state unions are. It's just another word for an empire. And the empire these people are creating is an empire of money, an empire of usury, an empire which goes against, you know, the very basis of what classical culture has represented for the past 2,500 years. And again, individually, uh, you, know, you have people who represent the left and the right and the center and the extreme left and the extreme right. And you have the, uh, the labor uh, is also represented mm -hmm. within the organization. You have the, you know, uh, the most important business leaders mm -hmm. there, you know, multi-billionaires, mm -hmm. key politicians, uh, European commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, European royalty sits at this very big table with all these other members. And finally, they're joined by uh, um, the leading representatives of uh, international uh, uh, mm -hmm. mainstream publications, such as New York Times, Washington Post, Le Monde from France, uh, mm -hmm. a group of priests from Spain. And that's one of the reasons, you know, we really haven't heard much mm -hmm. about these powerful people in the mainstream press. Koliko sam uspio shvatiti, trudite se biti na svakoj tajnoj Bilderbeškoj konferenci, barem izvana s fotoaparatom u ruci, je li to točno? <clears throat> well, it's, uh, I wish it was, uh, and, and present is, uh, is, is stretching it a little bit in a sense that, yes, I always know uh, where these people meet, but unfortunately I'm never allowed in, and I do mean unfortunately because I would like to find out, you know, firsthand. We do have excellent sources within Bilderberger uh, organization, and not one but several. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is how we always know what these people are talking about. And if you, you know, go back uh, over the last 10 years, my predictions over the past 10 years, some of them five, six, seven years in advance, were remarkably accurate as so many uh, alternative publications have, have admitted, such as, for example, in 2002 when the Bilderbergs met, met in the United States, not only did they decide on the exact date of the war, in Iraq, but they also decided to push the oil price up from uh, $18 a barrel to something like $100 a barrel by the end of 2007. And you know what? It hit 100 on the 2nd of January 2008, so that was a pretty good prediction. Možete li dati još neke primjere stvari koje su dogovorene na sasnicima grupe Bilderberg, a potom su nas, običnu populaciju, zatekli kao iznenađenje koju godinu dana kasnije? Uh, well, another thing is in 2005, um, they discussed pushing the oil price from $100 a barrel 
to 150 by middle of uh, uh, 2008, and it hit um, 147.5 in July, August uh, 2008. Also in 2005, and then a meeting in Germany, um, they talked about pushing the uh, gold price from $300 to $1,000, and of course it went up to $1,000 uh, an ounce. In 2006, when they met in Canada, they talked about uh, not so much uh, uh, orchestrating, but you know the fact that they couldn't prevent the uh, a complete and utter meltdown of the housing market in the United States and in many different countries in Europe, and amongst them uh, Spain. And <clears throat> as we saw, this is uh, um, exactly what happened. And going back to the 1990s, in uh, um, 1996, the war in Kosovo was discussed. And of course, that took place three years later. And in 1992, uh, for the first time when they met in Evian in France, they talked about the need for creating the United Nations Army. And uh, 14 years later, aside from the fact that we already have a rapid reaction force in Europe, which is your de facto European Army, um, 14 years later, that is in 2006, when they met in Canada in, in, on the outskirts of Ottawa, um, suddenly the United Nations Army became the key issue not only for the uh, Canadian politicians, but also, you know, in the mainstream Canadian press. Na koji način grupa Bilderberg provodi svoje odluke prema bazi, znači prema dolje, prema političarima u zemljama koje nemaju svog Bilderberga, da tako kažem, ili u drugim institucijama, naravno nisu svi uključeni u Bilderberge, pa ipak treba obaviti neki posao za njih. Well, you know, that's, that's a very, thank you, that's a very good question, and unfortunately, not too many people ask me this, uh, this question. The, uh, <clears throat> what's, uh, one of the reasons, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the reasons uh, people have a hard time believing in secret societies controlling the world is that there is a Cartesian fantasy world system where they literally believe that one person, a very small group of people, you know, uh, control the world instead of understanding it as as a dynamic social processes against, you know, the historical, uh, uh, especially when you put it in historical context uh, of social political events over the past thousand years. Uh, so no, there's no one bad guy who tells everybody else what to do. Yes, it's a, a socio-historical uh, concept. But what's interesting about these people is that uh, there's no one who is leading the group. You have a president who is in this case right now with Tienda Vignon, but he's not the decision maker. But for example, <clears throat> in January you have uh, Davos Economic Forum. In uh, February, March, the uh, Council of Foreign Relations, they have their annual meeting. Then in uh, April, May, in April, sorry, the, uh, the Trilateral, Trilateral Commission, they have their annual meeting. In May, June, Bilderbergers meet. In September, International Monetary Fund of the World Bank, they have their annual meeting. In October, Trilateral Commission Asia have their uh, regional meeting. In November, Trilateral Commission Europe, they meet. And in December, Trilateral Commission Americas, they have their regional meeting. But there's nobody leading these discussions. Mm -hmm. But the decisions reached in one get passed on to the other. And before you know it, they become the key points in regional elections, then national elections, mm -hmm. you know, then international elections. Then it becomes a key issue to be discussed in European Parliament and the United Nations. And before you know it, Every mass media publication is saying, now what are we going to do to stop genocide in Yugoslavia? What are we going to do about all these you know, poor people being killed in, in, Af in Afghanistan? We have to bring democracy to Afghanistan. And that's really how it works. As an example, I just, I just uh, I gave you. In 1992, they met in, uh, and discussed for the first time uh, the issue of the United Nations Army in, in Avignon in France. And then in 1995, taking advantage of the war in, uh, in ex-Yugoslavia, you know, uh, it became a key issue in national elections in Spain, where suddenly, you know, the mainstream uh, Spanish press, led by El País, which is a Bilderberger publication, was saying that, you know, there was a need to create a force that could fight, you know, the, uh, the bad Serbs so that they wouldn't kill the good people of, uh, you know, all these other uh, former Yugoslav provinces. And then uh, uh, in 1996, it became again an issue in the European elections. Uh, in 1998, uh, just when the war was getting underway, 1998, 1999 in, uh, in Kosovo, again it became a key issue in, in elections in France, in England, in Holland, in Denmark, and in Sweden. And then in 2001, BBC, which is the you know, main Bilderberger organ in the world, uh, 
it had a very important article where they're literally talking about the need to create the rapid reaction force and saying just how necessary that is for the stability of Europe. And then, as I said again, in 2006, Bilderbergers met in, uh, in Ottawa. And two days after the meeting ended, it was on the front page of every Canadian publication controlled, which is obviously mm -hmm. mainstream publications controlled by, by Bilderbergers, where it wasn't Bilderberg, but actually United Nations, according to the publications, who came up with the idea of the need to create the United Nations Army. Mm -hmm. And again, they take their time, but they certainly understand that it's a long process, mm -hmm. especially, again, if you put it in a historical context and not just look at it as a conspiracy of, of you know, Cartesian one-person conspiracy. Može li se reći da je Europska unija projekt Bilderberga? Well, of course, as a matter of fact, not only can we say it, but they themselves have admitted it, so that's no longer a, uh, uh, in question. Uh, they released uh, Etienne Davignon, the president of the Bilderbergers, talked a few months ago about uh, the fact that, yes, the, uh, the idea for the European Union was first, second, and mostly discussed at Bilderberg conference, and he was very proud of the fact that the uh, um, Bilderberg organization worked together to create what he believes to be such an important uh, um, group or, or, or pan-European Union for world's peace. S obzirom na sve što se od vas može čuti od Bilderbergsima, teško je zamisliti da su Europsku uniju zamislili kao demokratski raj, kako se predstavlja često puta u medijima kao nešto bolje od onog što zemlje koje još nisu ušle imaju. Što oni zapravo žele postići Europskom unijom? Kakva je njena struktura? Može li se govoriti o nekakvu vrsti prikrivene diktature ili čak otvorene, kao što neki tvrde? Well, you know, you just hit on, uh, right on the right word. You know, any kind of globalization is an empire, and any kind of an empire is, is, a, is a dictatorship. And theirs is, is, is an empire of money. And uh, in the end, their plan hasn't changed at all uh, over the past uh, thousand years. What's today called the uh, Bilderberg Group or the Bilderberg Organization or Society, uh, 800 years ago <clears throat> was called the Venetian Black Nobility. And uh, in fact, uh, if you look historically, these are the same families over this very long span of time, and that's why I do mean historically. You can really see how the same families have been working towards the goal of, uh, of control, and, uh, and we're seeing it right now. Uh, you know, European Union, you have the North American Union being created. African Union is already, uh, you know, ahead of North American Union in their plans. And now you have the uh, Asians uh, gathering together under one roof as well. And again, the plan hasn't changed in all these years or centuries. It is the wholesale destruction of nation-state republics. And that is very important because you see, nation states, independent nation states, have constitutions, flags, currencies, uh, borders, their own monetary systems. And uh, uh, right now, what we have in Europe is we have this pan-European union where nations are no longer allowed to feed their own citizens. They don't have their own monetary policy. It's controlled by the same people whose idea to destroy every nation state on earth. And obviously, you know, my advice to Croatia is please, whatever you do, think twice before you decide becoming third-rate citizens in this pan, you know, global uh, dictatorship. Kada se priča o uništenju nacionalnih država, što je danas stvarnost s obzirom da se želi stvoriti jedna nadnacionalna država iz svega što se vidi, kako se taj koncept uklapa u vrijeme od prije 700, 800 ili 600 godina? Kada još nije, nije ni bilo pravih nacionalnih država. Zbog čega ih je prvo trebalo stvarati da bi ih se potom uništavalo. Well, uh, what we're doing right now, if I, I'm, I'm not sure if you're referring to uh, uh, former uh, uh, Yugoslavia, or you're referring to... Uh, uh, ja, ja, govorim, ja govorim o jednom srednjovjekovnom svijetu, puno malih kraljevina, bez pravih nacija, kad ljudi čak i nisu svjesni svog nacionalnog identiteta, a države su tek kraljevine, tek će na, nastati od njih nacionalne države. You see, the idea, the whole concept of nation-state republics was born as a result of uh, a, a meeting, a council, which was held in 1439, 1440, which was called then <clears throat> the Council of Florence. And this Council of Florence was the temporary merger of the Eastern and Western rites of the uh, Christian Church. And it was led by uh, brilliant people, such as future Pope Pio II and uh, 
to me, the most brilliant person in the history of the last 600 years, uh, uh, Cardinal Nicolas of Cusa. And uh, as a result of, uh, uh, of that council of Florence, uh, First Nation State Republic was born in Europe and France with Louis XI, and then in England, which followed suit with Henry VII. And what we got <clears throat> with the nation state republics is we got a constitution uh, later in the United States, natural law, uh, general welfare. And, you know, the idea of general welfare, a lot of people understand it uh, as a welfare state, you know, some big fat guy sitting at home watching television, eating pizza, collecting unemployment benefits. But, you know, the whole idea of what general welfare represents, it's, uh, you know, it, it is immortality of, 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 of the planet, of the humans. What is the responsibility of governments to its citizens? To provide for future generations. And that is what general welfare means, especially as it's written in the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. And that's what these people have been trying to destroy. You know, the idea of welfare where the states, you know, provide as a higher goal and higher objective for its citizens. And that's what immortality is, you know, assuring the, you know, the survival of the human species. And that's, you know, the, that's the empire of the soul and of the mind. Of course, the empire of the money, which is what Bilderberg is, they don't need all these people. And another objective reached through nation state republics is for the first time in France, because it was an impetus given by the, gov by the people to the government to continue on the road to scientific uh, developments and progress. And as a result of that, France back then began winning square kilometers of space against nature. And that changed, that revolutionized the whole world. We, the people, started growing as people. That's called progress and development. And that has given us wealth. And as Leibniz discovered 200 years ago, progress and development is directly uh, proportional to population density. The more developed we are as nations, the more developed we are as the world, the wealthier we are, the more people live on the planet. And of course, the empire of the money doesn't need all these people. So they need to destroy nation states. They need to destroy, you know, the world economic system because this is the only way they can drag us back, as you said, you know, to the feudal age where you and I and our children and our children's children worked the land, died, and their children worked the land for a very small group of people who controlled everything else. Vladati svijetom kroz svjetsku banku, to ne bi bilo ni pola problema. Međutim, u zadnjih 30 godina pojavili su se dokumenti koji pokazuju da je jedno od strateških ciljeva smanjenje populacije, smanjenje broja ljudi na svijetu. Mnogi autori su spominjali neke dokumente iz 70. godina. U kojim dokumentima je znači otkrivena namjera ili nekakva misa da bi trebalo smanjiti broj ljudi na svijetu i kako se to uopće danas radi, ako je to istina? Well, you know, uh, uh, before modern 30, last 30 years, as you mentioned, you know, Malthus talked about this in his documents. And before that, beginning in the early 1600s, mm -hmm. you know, the Venetians, uh, Conti and Sarpi, they talked about it. In fact, uh, you know, Malthus' theory on population is a plagiarized version of, you know, old Venetian black nobility's uh, documents going back 450 years. Uh, in modern time, uh, you know, the most famous disc, uh, document which everybody talks about is the 1974 study, population study called Memorandum um, 200. And this memorandum, uh, they're talking about reducing the world's population from the year 74 to uh, 1974 to the year 2050 by 3 billion people. And it was the document signed by, by Kissinger and by Richard Nixon in, in, on April 24th. 1974. But again, uh, a lot of normal people, when I say normal, I mean a person who goes to work, wakes up in the morning, goes, you know, works nine to five, comes home, you know, watches television, reads an occasional book and watches a football game. That's a normal person. To explain to this normal person the fact that they want to, you know, reduce population from current level of 6.7 billion to 2 billion people, unless you put it in historical concept against the background of history, you know, people will look at you like you're insane. But again, it makes all the sense in the world because, as I said, you know, uh, previously, Leibniz discovered that uh, population density is proportional to growth. So if we prosper as nations, if we prosper as society, 
not now we not only are we improving the lifestyles of the people which is what general welfare is about our obligation as nations to make sure that we as human race survive the propagation of the human race that's what immortality is about and the you know the empire of, of the money they don't want all these people eating up their natural resources and that's why they need to reduce the world's population not because it's a whim but because it's a very historically logical concept if you look at, look at it from their point of view ljudi me kao što ste rekli teško prihvatiti ideju da bi neko htio ubiti 4 milijarde ljudi međutim lako je zamisliti nekoga tko je 37 u njemačkoj ljudima govorio da će postojati tvornice smrti gdje će ljude kamionima i vlakovima dovoditi pod tuševe ubiti spaliti i pustiti kroz dimnjak to bi naravno svima zvučilo fantastično, no to se dogodilo. Kad već spominjemo to prije 1954. i prije Bilderberga, kakve su bile veze tih ljudi sa onime što se zbivalo u Evropi 30. godina i 40. Danas već ima dosta podataka koje pokazuju da je glavni šef Cije bio pobornik nacizma, da su naciste financirali američki industrijalci, ljubitelji eugenike i sl. Čak i neki predsjed današnjih predsjednika. Kakvu je ulogu ova ista struktura ljudi imala u tom najmračnijem evropskom razdoblju? Jesu li zadovoljni svojim postignućem? Ne znam. Ne znam da su zadovoljni. 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 But, uh, um, you know, uh, again, uh, if you look at it historically, uh, what's today called Bilderbergers, back in the 1920s, uh, they were the synergy movement of empires. And the synergy movement of empires, uh, it was a, uh, a, a, an organization led by Nazis uh, who created uh, banks such as Bank Worms in France, who are the main sponsors of Vichy France and of, uh, and of Hitler. Uh, so again, these societies and organizations are very, very old and their intentions haven't changed. They keep morphing from one form to another, but the final objective is the same. And as far as who are some of these individuals are, you know, uh, when we talk about Bilderberg, as I said, it's Bilderberg and, you know, you have Trilateral Commission and you have Council for Relations working together. You have different NGOs, you have foundations, think tanks. Well, two of the principal foundations going back historically who played such an important role in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in what, what you were describing back in the 1930s in, in, in Nazi Germany, were the Alfred P. Sloan and the Sage Foundation. Uh, the, uh, um, uh, Alfred Sloan was the CEO of General Motors back in 1923, and of course, you know, an art Nazi. And uh, uh, both of these organizations, you know, they created the Liberty League in the United States, who in the 1930s tried to uh, depose Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the man who has done so much, you know, for America, the last great president in, in, in the United States history. And ironically enough, again, you know, merging the past and the future and the present in, into one, the same characters who today are the, you know, the hardcore nucleus of Barack Obama's administration, you know, you have Larry Summers and Peter Orsgad and Sus Sunstein, all of these people, they all, you know, come out of the uh, Alfred P. Sloan and Sage Foundation, you know, which is a, a roundtable kind of organization. And all of these people are what they call themselves behavioral economists, which two words, you have to be, you know, insane or on drugs to actually put behavioral and economists together until you understand that what they're doing today is exactly the same kind of, you know, uh, morphing of, of evil principles uh, back in the 30s of using economy, using behavior, you know, of people to control economic processes. Opisali ste kako to danas rade američki predsjednici, no malo prije ste rekli da je Franklin Delano Roosevelt bio zadnji veliki predsjednik. Nije li on zapravo bio dio tog istog plana s obzirom da je bio upleten i u rješenja takozvane velike depresije, još jedne namjeno stvorene krize, potom je također imao sklonosti prema ulasku Amerike u rat i sl. Pa mi se čini da on dosta bio, kako bi se to reklo starim jezikom, na liniji tog plana. Što ga čini tako posrednim u odnosu na druge predsjednike? Well, you know, you're absolutely right. The Great Depression wasn't all that great and wasn't really a depression. It was simply a transfer of wealth. And uh, it's something that a lot of people 
uh, don't understand about how money works. It's not like water where it evaporates and disappears. Money goes from you know, point A to point B. So in the case of Great Depression, somebody lost and somebody gained. Uh, when I talk about uh, uh, Roosevelt being a great president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, I mean, uh, not Teddy Roosevelt, uh, um, I'm not talking about uh, uh, every one of his actions was an uh, you know, action you know, for the betterment of humanity. I also put it in terms of historical concept where certain decisions were made, and I'm not making excuses for him, because as a matter of fact, I have never voted in my entire life, and I would never do it for anybody ever, here or anywhere else. But, you know, when you put it in historical concept, once he became president, uh, uh, you know, he did some wonderful things for America, such as, uh, uh, again, going back to the idea of, of, uh, of national banks uh, and uh, to the physical economy, which actually gave growth to the United States, which has been destroyed right now, not only in the United States, but everywhere else, which is one of the reasons why society is in, in such a bad state as it is. And, of course, Roosevelt is, was, you know, behind the, uh, all the information uh, with as far as... Uh, uh, Pearl Harbor is concerned. So again, there's like, there's no denying that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the man is, is, you know, he's not a saint. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to put, I think, we have to put all that in, uh, in political context. You know, you have to navigate some pretty treacherous water, mm -hmm. you know, and there are certain things you have to do which you certainly don't agree with, and there are certain other things you could do. And I think he did enough good things to be warranted a great president. Mm -hmm. And another great president, you, you could also say Kennedy, but, you know, he certainly didn't live long enough, mm -hmm. you know, to... Mm -hmm. To warn this. Za, njega, za njega vjerujem da bi veliki predsjednik, recimo zato je ubijen, pa eto, uh, tako bi se recimo postupalo s nekim ko ne pleše u taktu. Uh, kad smo već kod američkih predsjednika, postoji nešto što se zove Loganov zakon. Taj Loganov zakon ima velike veze s američkim sudjelovanjem na sastancima grupe Bilderberg. Objasnite nam kakav je to zakon i koga i kako krši. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, your, your previous comment, mm -hmm. Kennedy was a great man. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he wasn't there long enough, you know. And uh, uh, as far as Logan Act is concerned, um, basically what it says is that uh, it's illegal for American uh, uh, businessmen to meet uh, in private with politicians to discuss public policy. And uh, this is exactly what Bilderbergers, you know, all the Bilderberger uh, businessmen have been doing since you know, 1954, but flaunting a, a, a Logan Act, again, putting it in context, it's really not that important because, you know, politicians do illegal things all the time, and I wish it was only, you know, as bad as somebody trying to make a little bit of money on the side. Unfortunately, uh, it's a far, you know, greater evil, but that said, um, very few people who attend Bilderberg actually understand what's behind their final objectives. In other words, just because, you know, someone is invited to a Bilderberg conference doesn't mean that they understand what the final objectives are. These objectives are not revealed to just to anybody. Uh, these are very powerful groups of people who have been meeting for many, many, many years. And again, it's, it's just a medium of bringing all these interests together. But uh, it's, it's a very dynamic system. You know, it changes with the times. It absorbs and, 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 and you know, new parts while it excretes, you know, the, the remaining of old, you know, dead, decrepit companies like Arthur Anderson or, or Enron. Uh, you know, uh, members come and go by the system. It doesn't change. It's, it's a self-perpetuating system, a, a virtual spider web of financial, political, military and industrial, you know, interests with a Venetian ultramontane uh, uh, model at the center. But again, out of all these people who attend, uh, most of them only know that they're breaking the law by attending because of the Logan Act. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that there's a, you know, objective of destroying, you know, the world as we understand the world, you know, for a good of a very small group of people. That, I think, is also, you know, in, in fairness to most of these people. Je li točno da svoje mandate predsjednici nekih najvećih zemalja svijeta dobivaju upravo na sasancima grupe Bilderberg? I ako da... Kako je to bilo s nekim od aktualnih vodećih ljudi u svijetu? Well, the, I, I think the, the, you know, the most telling example is Bill Clinton, who attended back in uh, 1991. Uh, um, I should mention that sitting presidents, uh, meaning presidents who are in office, never attend Bilderberg, simply because every second of their time is accounted for, but you know, they're represented by others in the government. 
and the people who attend Bilderberger meetings, they don't attend as individuals, they attend as representatives of the government or some organization. Uh, as far as Clinton, he came in 1991, and uh, uh, David Rockefeller took him aside and he asked him, you know, how he felt about NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which was signed in, in, uh, on October 3rd, 1987 in, in Washington. And Clinton, had, you know, at the time was just a lowly governor of Arkansas, and he was making $35,000 a year, which, you know, compared to what David Rockefeller makes a year, you know, makes you wonder what was he doing there. Možda ima mali fuš u švercanju droge, ali to je druga priča. Well, he did, but that's not why he attended Bilderberg, you know. It's, uh, so the, uh, uh, so uh, David uh, Rockefeller said to him, you know, do you know what NAFTA is? And, uh, and Clinton said, well, no, I have no idea. So Rockefeller sat him down, and he gave him a master class on, uh, uh, on, uh, on what North American Free Trade Agreement was. And then he asked him, you know, if you were president, would you support it? And he said, well, is it important to you, David? And Rockefeller said, you know, it's very, very important to me. And uh, Clinton said, well, you know, I, of course. And so Rockefeller stretched his arm and said, mm -hmm. you know, thank you, Mr. President. You know, it's, it's a story. It's a funny story, and, and it's, a, it's almost an anecdote. But the fact is, is that next year, you know, the following year, 1992, he was elected president. And another example is Barack Obama. He attended in, uh, in uh, 2008 along with Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, that famous episode where, you know, the reporters were on the airplane and suddenly Barack Obama wasn't there. Mm -hmm. He just kind of disappeared. And then he you know, appeared at the Bilderberg Conference in Chantilly. And at that meeting, uh, the American delegates told Barack Obama, and again, I know this because our members, you know, who are inside Bilderberg have told us this, and for those who are doubting what I'm saying right now, again, if you look on the internet, my predictions going back years, years and years, I, my batting average is almost 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, so American delegates told Barack Obama that, you know, the presidency was his to lose. In other words, you play by, you know, do what you're supposed to, say the right things, you know, smile the right time, and, you know, you win the presidency. And uh, they also told Hillary Clinton um, to stay out of his way. Because uh, you know the initial plan of, of, of Hillary Clinton was to take over the president, or to take over the, the Democratic nomination at uh, the Democratic National Convention, and uh, they basically warned her not to even think about it. And uh, and so when you know after the Democratic National Convention, so many Hillary Clinton supporters were so disappointed mm -hmm. because they absolutely sh were sure that she was going to try to you know take it away from him, but she couldn't because there was just you know the Bilderbergers have too much dirt. Mm -hmm on Hillary Clinton. Koji su evropski predsjednici dobili svoje poslove na sastancima grupe Bilderberg? Well, you know, um, it's not so, it's not uh, such a clear cut case as in the case of, of Bill Clinton or, or, or Barack Obama. Uh, you know, Tony Blair attended and then uh, uh, several years later he became Prime Minister of, of England and uh, 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 Jose Socrates from Portugal attended, and then you know, a year and a half later became, you mm. know, the leader of Portugal. But uh, Angela Merkel. Uh, well, uh, that, that's true. Uh, the the case with with Merkel is different in a sense. That, as a matter of fact, I was the you know uh, it was published in Nexus magazine, uh, and I was the only person in the world. Uh, that's, there's that famous photograph of of uh, of uh, uh, Chancellor uh, uh, Gerhard Schroeder entering the Bilderberg conference and in uh, Rotahegern in Germany in 2005, which I took from about a you know, kilometer away with a very long, long lens. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's shaking hands uh, with uh, Jürgen Tremp, the, uh, the CEO of, uh, um, of uh, Daimler Chrysler. And then there's another photograph where Merkel is coming in as well. <coughs> but in, in the case of Merkel, it was just you know, uh, simply a, a uh, um, decision where they felt that, it's the, not that she, made a great impression or anything like that. They just felt that, you know, Schroeder was all used up and uh, they just needed a change. And they all decided to, you know, to get their people to promote uh, Merkel. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, at the meeting, they were talking about how to get her very boring, because she's boring, she's like a rag, and trying to get this rag to actually look, you know, appetizing. And, uh, but she didn't earn it in the case of, you know, Clinton earned it. Mm -hmm. You know, Barack Obama did his thing, and, and I think the best case of somebody earning it and not getting it, but it's not because of Bilderberg, because it just, you know, they just couldn't do it, is a case of uh, <clears throat> John Edwards, um, who was the, 
vice presidential uh, uh, candidate on the Democratic ticket with John Kerry. In 2004, he attended the Bilderberg Conference in, in Stressa in Italy, and he gave an absolutely brilliant uh, uh, talk on the state of the labor unions in the United States. And Bilderbergers, they were so impressed with his eloquence that breaking, you know, protocol, which is a very important thing to Bilderberg, you know, they all got up and they all, you know, clapped, uh, um, you know, in, uh, in recognition of his great speech. And then uh, Henry Kissinger literally, you know, walked out of the room, picked up the telephone, uh, his cell phone, and called John uh, uh, Kerry and he said, John, I think we found your vice presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, you know, again, you may not believe a story. You may, it may sound like a tall story. But the fact is that when my photographs of John uh, Edwards appeared in the alternative press in the United States, uh, New York Times immediately published an article on page 12 of their edition recognizing and admitting that, well, you know, might John Edwards, you know, being selected, you know, chosen because of, you know, a great performance? And, you know, of course, they made it look. Like, you know, he was a great leader, mm -hmm. but in case, in fact, you know, they just had to defuse the situation and uh, because of, you know, my coverage of, of their conference. Mm -hmm. Spomenuli ste da se uh, u toj vrlo dinamičnoj grupi sve mijenja, osim plana, ljudi se mijenjaju taktike, čak ponekad strategije. Međutim, još nešto se ne mijenja. Često puta, dugi niz desetljeća, dakle, tu se pravljaju ista imena, konkretno, mislim na Rockefellere i Rothschilde. Jesu li ta imena dosta, doista toliko važna i bitna u kontekstu plana za dominacijom i vlašću nad svijetom i same grupe Bilderberg? Um, they are important uh, to a certain level. They are a lot less important than most people realize. The fact that, you know, people know their names makes them a lot less important than we think. Uh, because, you know, um, I think it's uh, not very logical to think that normal people uh, who have a normal job in a factory or as a teacher would know the names of the most powerful people in the world, you know, and, and, and considering the fact that the Rockefeller wealth, you know, it only goes back 150 years and the Rothschild's wealth goes back 250 years, you know, which in historical terms is not very much, considering also that their wealth is measured in $50 billion, $100 billion, no more, because according to Forbes magazine, you know, the guy who has the most money in the world is uh, Warren Buffett or Bill Gates. In fact, the really powerful families, the really wealthy families historically, I'm talking about a thousand year wealth, uh, their wealth is measured in trillions and quadrillions of dollars. Now, when I say quadrillions, I'm, just, I'm not just uh, throwing a very large number mm -hmm. with lots of zeros at you to impress you. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I have a document uh, uh, which uh, we will publish in my new book, The Shadow Masters. And it's an extract of a bank account from Baron Krupp, K-R-U-P-P. -P. These are, you know, uh, 19th century German industrialists uh, and uh, um, arms merchants. Well, this one bank extract has $112 trillion. Mm -hmm. You know, considering that you and I have more than one bank account, mm -hmm. we may only have $10 in the bank account, mm -hmm. but we have more than one. Mm -hmm. I would think that, you know, the groups would mm -hmm. also have more than one. And if one account has $112 trillion, mm -hmm. you can only imagine how much money these mm -hmm. people have. And as far as the names are concerned, I discovered, uh, after spending two and a half years uh, researching in the National Library in Florence, which is one of the most important centers in the world for old uh, research, um, that the uh, two of the more, not the most, but two of the more powerful families in the world are, one of the Savoys, you know, most people may know the name because of the Hotel Savoy, mm -hmm. but another name and this is a name that uh, I think very few people who are not initiated would know is the Frescobaldi. Mm -hmm. And their wealth is measured in hundreds of quadrillions mm -hmm. of dollars. You know, and when I say it again, I don't just throw a number mm -hmm. out at you. But it's a that the English Well, in fact, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Queen of England is uh, out of the better known people to the general population, she is far wealthier than the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. Mm -hmm. And although periodically we, you know, we hear that the Queen has 
three billion dollars. Mm -hmm. In fact, that you know, I, I think she probably has three billion dollars, you know, in, in you mm -hmm. know, in her purse. In coins. <laughs> in, in in coins, exactly. Because uh, again, the uh, Queen of England, Elizabeth II, uh, her roots are uh, German, but uh, her roots are also Venetian. Because mm -hmm. as I have discovered. She goes back to the uh, very, very powerful Venetian black nobility family of Marquez de Este de Venezia. And uh, these are the nobles, you know, whose roots go back again about 800 years. Mm -hmm. So you can say that, you know, mm -hmm. she is certainly today mm -hmm. the most powerful mm -hmm. woman of, oh, not woman, person uh, mm -hmm. in the world and mm -hmm. certainly the wealthiest out of the known individuals. To je dugo vremena za štenju. Uh, sve ove detalje i puno više njih, uh, naravno, pišete u svojoj knjizi Istini da priča o družbi Bilderberg. Uh, spomenuli ste malo prije uh, sklonost protokolima i važnost protokola kod Bilderberga. Imaju li ta tajna društva, poput Bilderberga, svoju okultnu stranu? Znači, neku koja je sklona ritualima, misti, mističnom pogledu na svijet i sl. Well, uh, you know, um, I, I, as I said, the, um, the most uh, important uh, of uh, these organizations within Bilderberg and their roots is, uh, is a Martinist occult secret society, which is... Uh, uh, going back to the 1780s, and you know, that, that's probably the most important occult society. I don't know what their rituals are, uh, but uh, again, you know, we can trace a Bilderberg back to the, uh, you know, uh, Martinist cult, we can trace it back to the Venetian black nobility about 800 years ago, but we can also trace it back all the way, you know, you know to, the, uh, to the oracles of Delphi, it's, it's, it's the same the same people, this fight really hasn't changed in the last 2,500 years. Can we go to Egypt, Sumera? Well, uh, absolutely. That, you know, that's exactly where, you know, uh, that's where I was, uh, was going, all the way back, you know, to the ancient mm -hmm. Egypt, because their rituals are the same, you know, mm -hmm. their ideals are the same, you know, their vision of things is, uh, is the same. And you can take, you know, any one of the organizations you want within Bilderberg, and they all function on uh, on the same ancient principles and it's, again it's it's a very old fight spanning you know 2500 years at least going back to the you know uh, plato and, and socrates on the one hand and then aristotle on the other and going all the way to the present so it's it's a very old fight and i think it's a i i think you know they've been g going at it for such a long time and unfortunately they're so close mm -hmm. you know to 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 you know reaching their goals but you know We're not exactly without resources, mm -hmm. we the people. Uh, evo za kraj, neću vas pitati gdje su bili, gdje se odvijelo nekoliko zadnjih sastanaka grupe Bilderberg, što sigurno znate, niti gdje će se nekoliko budućih odvijat, što možda znate, možda ne, uh, nego uh, bi pitanje bilo uh, ono što ste na početku i rekli. Koji bi bio u konačnici kraljni cilj grupe Bilderberg? Postoji li trenutak u kojem bi oni bili zadovoljni i rekli evo, postigli smo svoj cilj, sad možemo konačno se nakon 4000 godina opustiti, uživati, popit piće bez straha da će nas mase svrnuti ili nešto. Čini mi se ta sklonost prema moći pomalo iracionalna, pa me zanima, postoji li tu uopće zaista krajni cilj kada će sve biti gotovo? Well, you know, it's absolutely rational if you are a normal human being, uh, if you are degenerate, as they are degenerates, uh, we cannot understand why somebody would want to control the sun, the, you know, the air, uh, uh, the wind, the water. We, we can't understand that. But this is exactly what these people want. They want to be gods on earth. And to us, you know, that's degeneracy. But in order for them to be gods on earth, you know, they must destroy us. But what they don't understand, you know, is, is the planet's uh, uh, progress and greatness and, and immortality is measured by the minds of the people. And that's something that they're trying to destroy, and, and that's one of the uh, only ways that uh, uh, we can lose this, is uh, if they can uh, destroy our minds of the people. Because again, this degeneracy of their ultimate goal of total control passes you know, through people who will allow them to do it. And uh, before the show, you know, we were talking about Croatia, and, uh, and I was very disturbed to hear what you had to say about you know, them uh, lowering the percentage of, uh, of votes that they would require to enter the European community. And, you know, my advice, you know, to Croatia, and, you know, I hope, uh, you know, country listens, 
don't join European communities, stay free, independent nation with your own monetary system, you know, where a country can feed its own citizens and decide its own future. Being in Europe only leads to destruction, as I can tell you from experiences in France, in Spain, in Portugal, Greece is about to default and become, you know, fourth world status nation. Is that what Croatia wants as well? Hvala vam na gostovanju i do neke sljedeće prilike. Želim vam puno uspjeha i u vašem filmu po kojem, za koji se radi po knjizi i s vašom knjigom Istinita priča o družbi Bilderberg i novim knjigama i do neke sljedeće prilike. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Hvala i vama na pažnji. Postoji stara izreka da se kočijaši mijenjuju, a konji ostaju isti. S obzirom na sve čini se da izreka nije potpuno točna, čini se zapravo da su i kočijaši uvijek isti. U tom slučaju nema zapravo druge nego da konji nešto promijene. Doviđenja.